Junkies. Welcome to the Popcorn Junkies. And today we are going to be reviewing A Mother's Instinct. Just Mother's Instinct. Oh, mother's we don't need to put instinct. A Mother's Instinct. It's just never Mother's get the Instinct. Titles right. uh, this is a film we saw on Friday. This is the, the new film starring Jessica Chastain and Anne Hathaway. Um, it's directed by Benoit Delon. It's his first, his first film. He was an assistant oh, yeah. cameraman years ago. Do you remember that film Jean de Florette with Gerard Depardieu? I do. Blimey, you, Petit uh, Bois. <laughs> do you remember the follow-up, Manon de Source? Loved it. Well, um, so he was a cameraman. This is his first direct, this is a directorial debut. It's based on a book called, I think, Behind the Hate. I think that's how it translates. So I'll do it in French. Derrière la haine. The behind, derrière. Oh, I wish I'd known it was a French thing. It's a French book. Oh. And it was a French film. Directed by Olivier Massé du Passé. Okay, that would explain. That everything. explains this kind of milky kind of vision, you know, the sort of slightly misty kind of soft focus. Anyway, it's called Mother's Instinct. Uh, they play neighbourly women set in the 1960s, early 1960s. Not neighbourly, neighbours. Neighbours, yeah, yeah, but they're neighbourly as in they, they yeah. do parties together, they hang out, the husbands are friends, they know each other. They're unbelievably close. Yeah, exactly, which is one of my, let's just park that thought there, because if a problem emerges for me in this film, it's how close they were and what then subsequently happens. It's called Mother's Instinct because it's about being a mum and it's about a tragedy or a trauma that happens, which is revealed in the trailer to um, Anne Hathaway's son. And the way in which Anne Hathaway's son comes to a grisly end um, is really around which this entire film pivots. It's that moment. It's a moment of parental neglect, um, or, or is it a moment of parental yeah. neglect? Um, but basically, Jessica Chastain, and you sort of, we have to give you the nuts and bolts of what kind of happens, and this is the gist of the film. Jessica Chastain witnesses Anne Hathaway's son fall. Um, and of course, then Anne Hathaway goes into huge grief, and it's that process of us witnessing her grief through the eyes, really, of Jessica Chastain. It sits much more on Jessica Chastain's point of view, it's from her position. And then what this becomes is a sort of psychological portrait of two women dealing with grief in different ways, with Jessica Chastain beginning to believe that Anne Hathaway is much more malevolent and responsible for that death, or perhaps that death, or um, and and then other deaths and other happenings within the film. And so as it got going, I felt like we were in such a conventional film. Right from the beginning, it's beautiful. The colours, mm -hmm. I loved every single shot. Like the design, the production design was fantastic. Every costume was stunning. Yeah, the the gardens were stunning. The houses were stunning. The women were stunning. And the whole opening of the film was the friendship that every every couple wants with mm. their neighbours. It's like the dream, dream mm. situation. Mm. What, 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 when is it set? Is it 60s? 19, early 60s. Early 60s, yeah. And so... Quintessential suburban, white picket fence, beautiful yeah. lawns. I mean, beautiful gardens, my God. It's stunning. The roses. The roses. I'll oh. never recover from those roses. I knew you'd come out and go, Cat, why don't we have roses? No, like I that? didn't, because I sat there going, those roses, they've stuck those roses on. I'll ask Mark about mm. that. Mm. But um, yeah, so, you know, it, the opening, the beautiful cars, mm -hmm. I mean, pristine mm -hmm. uh, vintage cars. And the opening of it was actually quite clever because you did think that there was going to be a man of that right at the beginning, didn't you? So you were set up like, oh yeah, this is going to be good. And um, it was quite a long piece, the first bit actually, wasn't it? Because mm. we're in the Hatton Hathaway character's birthday mm. and there's dancing mm. and drinking and it's all very sort of almost, almost, a bit lipstick lesbian between Anne and... Well, I thought it was all going to turn into one of those I parties where they held the keys in an ashtray and they all pop upstairs. I thought it was all going to go a bit yeah. It was a bit, it was a bit uh, what was it, the ice, what was that film with uh, Kevin Spacey? Do you remember that? Was it the ice storm? Or... I must make, do you remember <laughs> my daughter's name? But, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I thought you're right. I, I thought it, and I thought the supporting cast, the actors who played the husbands were very good because it's that classic very thing. Very good. They were very sort of Great backgrounded friend. but It was the enough. friendship because yeah. you had a moment where you thought, oh God, yes. are they all going to have sex with each other? Yeah. And then you thought, no, these people just have an intense love. Mm. There were some really good moments where, you know, where we started to see the melodrama slip mm. in actually with the da da da, what's going on here? Why are they talking about having a baby? Why is it like suddenly gone all weird? Um, beautiful scene between Angela Chastain and Angela. Anne, Hath Anne Hathaway. Oh, Anne Hathaway and Janice? <laughs> what's her name? Jan Angela. Uh, Anne. Anne? Jessica Chastain. Oh, Jessica Chastain. <laughs> <laughs> between the two women that was um it was incredibly intimate it was a beautiful scene 
two actresses completely handing over their vulnerable. They were so loving with each other and the kind of friendship that every woman wants. You know, that she's talking, one of them is saying to the other, no, if whatever you want to do, if you want to go back to it, I'll be here, I'll help, I'll look after your child, or the intense. Mm. And it was just in a small kitchen, and it was a beautiful scene. And it set up the intensity of this friendship. Mm. They were sisters, more than, way more than friends. But they were sisters because of the kind of plight of women of that age. Yeah, so so this is very much a portrait. So there are discussions, certainly between Jessica Chastain and her husband, where you know he says he wants to have a baby, why she wants to get a job, she asks the question of Anne Hathaway, is this enough? You feel that they're both, you know, you feel the fact that they're women trapped in an age. And if one of the two of them was, if you like, more comfortable with her lot, it was Anne Hathaway who was more comfortable yes. with her lot. She was more, she was more the surrendered yes. wife, just so grateful yeah. to have had a child, um, loves her husband, adores, happy, mm. you know twinkling in and out of the school and the PTAs and all of that. But what I also liked was, and in a weird way, Anne Hathaway's relationship with her husband was the most troubled, but it was the most troubled, obviously, after they like, lose, the, after the death of Not their the son. Not the beginning, you think no. they're madly well, I mean, love, it's quite nice sexual. that they were all quite in love. We didn't have to park in very it. Very sexual sort of... with each other. Yeah, 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 exactly. All off to go and have a hot night of sex. There was, like, no problems no. there. And then the pivot happens, the narrative moment happens where the boy falls to his death. And, we, and Jessica Chastain also has her own son, too who um, is a curious character because, of course, he's, he's friends with Anne Hathaway's son, becomes aware of, because he's told, that the, the, the other boy has died. And then it becomes one of those sort of melodramas, very much in the fashion of... I remember the film Mildred Pierce, Joan yes, Crawford. Yes, love that film. Yeah. I, I, I love the melodramas. Yeah, and, and all the Joan Betty Crawford, Davis. Betty Davis films. And this very much is a sort of modern melodrama in that sense because what makes a good melodrama for me are, are some of the attributes of what makes a good film noir so Mildred Pierce is a good example where it was melodramatic and melodrama is really the drama of family and emotions and all that but then parked within Mildred Pierce and this is that film noiry dark thing of oh who done it who's responsible is there Classic a question thriller. yeah and is there a question mark over the intention so well at one point I thought the little boy had something to do with it he had a very malevolent presence he, I kept thinking he was going to burst into flames he and did, do something I don't mean this disrespectfully but he'd be brilliantly cast in a horror film because yeah I, I he really had something really brooding about mm, him yeah he did what happens with it it creeps up on you because the beginning of the film is a bit like, in look and feel, Desperate Housewives. Yeah, Do you or, remember the picket, white, white picket yeah, fence? Yeah. All that? It's like that, isn't it? Or a bit Stepford Wives. Stepford well. Wives, mm. bit, but not because they're very sexed mm. up and they're all having a great time and they're mm. boozing and smoking. So there's naughty behaviour going on. Mm. <clears throat> but the melodrama really builds through the film, doesn't it? To the point where... But because when it first starts to build more into melodrama, you go with it. We went with it because we've been sort of, we've been put in a good place at the beginning of the film. I was enjoying it. I wanted to know more about the relationships. And I thought, wow, this is going to get so complex. What's going on with these people? But it did start to move into melodrama. Good themes because it was all about, you know, if you think even at the, those times, the 60s, we forget. Women could be committed. Women could be taken off by, you know, in a van by psychiatrists well, just, just not behaving perfectly. Yeah, but just to give context to what you're saying, because what is the melodrama? I'd be wondering, well, what are you talking about? What happens really is it becomes a very elaborate portrait of Jessica Chastain increasingly mm. becoming increasingly suspicious of what Anne Hathaway's intentions were. That Anne Hathaway was potentially responsible for the child's death, also wants something awful to happen to her own son. Um, and that she's also responsible at another point in the film for something awful happening to her mother-in-law. So but, but, a lot of mm. a lot of tragic things happen in the flower beds of Anne Hathaway's garden. For me, melodrama means when it all goes a little bit over the top and mm. unbelievable, mm. and it's kind of like very heightened mm. story. Yeah, no, 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 no absolutely. And to step but the out. cause of that, the trigger yeah. of that, is Jessica Chastain's increasing suspicion. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm still in it, and I'm still mm. like going with it. And for me, it's it's just a drama, mm. and, and I love a good drama, and I love good, you know, mm. intense relationships. But and and um, the whole reveal of um, uh, uh, Jessica Chastain having had yeah, man, mental having health section. issues, being sectioned. We don't yeah. find out that actually until much later, much later too, when, when her husband says, "I'll have you put away again." Mm. Um, and so I so I was loving all of that, but like you. And at the beginning, when Anne Hathaway turns against her because she's in this grief-stricken place, 
and both her and her husband turn away. Yeah, they from... hold them arms. So that was very powerful at the door when the husband comes out. He they was go, such a they go around to sort of and share their apologies, and you sort of feel it was a very. And he holds on to his friend, the yeah. man, and and totally blanks steps up. Yeah, blanks um, Jessica Chastain. And so you, then you see that just the crumbling of this this friendship, mm -hmm. and it, I felt quite heartbroken. What? I was wanting to scream and go, just go over there and ask him what's the matter. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but there were quite a few curious so moments. Was a bit weird. Well, no, no, it went so weird for me. So weird, and so we, melodrama. Well, it, and and really, the problem for me around this film was what happens to. I think they're both great in it, but I think what happens to Anne Hathaway's character was too sudden, too extreme, and too... We, because we're coming from Jessica Chastain's position, I didn't have any problem with the highs, lows, and the trying to work out what's going on in Jessica Chastain's head. At one point, I thought the reveal was gonna be that Jessica Chastain in a sort of flashback of some form, because it was going in this direction. I thought there was gonna be a moment where actually Jessica Chastain enticed the boy to his death, and that she was a nut job, and that she actually didn't, she wanted what Anne Hathaway wanted, and all this kind of stuff. But what kind of really frustrated me was Anne Hathaway suddenly turned into an automaton that walked around and just stared in doorways. So they parked quite early on a sort of, not malevolence, but a blank creepiness to Anne Hathaway that I didn't believe, given the intensity of that beautiful scene at the beginning, I felt we needed another beat or two of intensity somewhere else between the two of them. Because well, they there was when she comes back from from the mental institution and apologises and said, I pushed you away and I mm. needed you. She, I thought that was beautifully mm. played by Anne Hathaway. Mm. It was so beautiful. Yeah, that was nice. I can just fall into that woman's eyes and just believe anything she says. Yeah. You see, I think grief is, 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 is universally misunderstood, mm. the intensity of it and the way that some people will respond to something that was is so traumatic. Mm. So traumatic, your child falls off a balcony and dies. We know now that PTSD can, can mm. you know, trigger psychosis. And so I was all right with all of that. I just didn't like the way they managed it. I, I was okay with it. Mm. I like you think there were scenes, there were pages missing from mm. the script. Mm. Hang on a minute. I mean, she's going to say something mm. else supposed to happen. But I was going with it. But for me, it was when the leather gloves started to come well, out. Yeah, and this happens quite late on. So, they, I mean, the, the, the film it's really... Three, three parts, the Yeah, film. very much three The parts. last third is... I really liked... I, what I liked in the middle part, I love the setting up. I thought the setting yeah, up was I really did. convincing. And I, and I had third, really yes. nice ensemble acting between all the husbands. And, you know, they weren't just... They weren't just archetypes. And they weren't just men of that time who had nothing to like about them. They were you could a bit see, trapped in the men of yeah, the time. Yeah, well. but you could see the charm and you could see mm. and all that. And you felt that Anne Hathaway's husband was dealing with his grief with drink. Anne Hathaway was de dealing with it by donning a pair of black gloves and going a little bit rogue. Now, there was a point in this film where it began to feel like, um, A, as I said, an awful lot of people were dying in Anne Hathaway's garden in one spot. Um, and I began to feel that the narrative beats just became a bit eggy. Now, you made a good point as we came out. Was that what they were going for? Were they self-consciously almost pastiching and riffing on the whole kind of that's nice, what the last 1960s was. melodrama. Because I said to Mark, what's this film called again? And yeah. he said, Mother's, Mother's Instinct. Instinct. So I went, oh, not Mother's Instinct, a reversioning of melodrama. And he said- <laughs> That wouldn't be very catchy. <laughs> well, no, no, but I was being <laughs> yeah, facetious. Yeah, no, no. And I went, because is it a melodrama? Is that what he wanted? Mark said, right, well, I'm going to look at an interview with the director and find out. I said, but that doesn't work, yeah. does it? Because that was, if it had been sold to me as a melodrop, you know, Mildred Pierce, perfect example. I go, oh God, we're doing like a, but what happened, because it took me by surprise, the last last third to me was almost a comedy. And when, and, and we are so lucky, when we go and watch a film together, we go, We I can feel us going exactly, we journey. don't look at each other, we don't say anything to each other. Mm. But when you said mm. to me, well, when she opened no, she the opened medicine the box, Yeah, and it may as well have said on one of them, Mother-in-law's pills. Poisonous pills. pills. And I laughed because I thought, <laughs> oh, right, yeah, we're on exactly the same trajectory here. Yeah. Or downward spiral. I well, know. I mean, right down Obviously to downward Jessica spiral. Chastain goes into a basement, don't go into the basement, gets trapped in the basement. No, no, it doesn't become, it becomes comic. Yeah. And Anne Hathaway's psychosis is a problem with that because it's not beyond the realms of possibility that you would just be walking around in the I fun. agree. But it was the script. It was like suddenly she's put and it was black the And it was the direction. I mean, you don't do, I don't think anyone can realistically get anyone to put black gloves on. They shouldn't have shown it. Just let her have black girl gloves on. Do you know what I mean? That, no, but that was, was so... That, for me, the third Kate. part was high melodrama. Mm. 
It almost needed to go into black and white and there to be a poster up of Joan Crawford somewhere. Yes. Yeah. It, it was, we stepped you may into as well have, a different era of movies. It wouldn't have been at all surprising if they opened one of the wardrobes and there was a sort of four piece orchestra doing Betty the music. Davis with the there. music going. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. So for me, it became crass, it became embarrassing, it became unbelievable. A bit of a giggle. And it became wrongly funny. Um, and and Anne Hathaway became like a, but Anne Hathaway ended up being a little bit like a very pretty version of uh, the villain in Halloween. <laughs> She's sort of walking around, is she going to kill next? Now, all that said, I really like the fact that they didn't bail out at the end of the film. That they went, because so often in films, especially in melodramas, I mean, the amount of films in the 1950s and 60s that would get to edit, the filmmaker and the actors would all be on board with this dark ending. The number of films that would then go to the studios and they would tag an ending oh. and a happy ending. So many oh. of the films that we know never intended to end like that. This film ends in the way that it should end, darkly. And Don't forget there's another end on the end though. What? The end end? That's the end end I'm talking about. What end? With her with the boy. Well, oh, that's, that's a jolly bit. It's not jolly. It She's is. completely worked the system to no, get into- No, but the end, before the end ends, when- Yes, that's the good bit. Well, that's the good bit, but also the fact that the, the thing that would never have been allowed to happen in a melodrama is that she got away with it. Not only got away with it, but managed to replace her child. Well, that, but it was a happy ending for her. Yeah, but it wasn't a happy ending for, for Jessica and everyone else, was it? No. With her black gloves. Anyway, it was comedic, it was ridiculous, it was silly, but it wasn't... It all... wasn't unpleasant. No, exactly. It yeah. wasn't unpleasant. It's weird. It wasn't unpleasant. But it wasn't... It was entertaining. Because That's we just, entertainment. That, because we moved into a comedy melodrama. But it was an odd shift. I, I felt we'd worked all this character development up and then we suddenly went and into... And if we plunged it into black and white, we would have understood. It felt like a Mel Brooks comedy. I mean, literally, <laughs> it, it was it was ridiculous. Um, <coughs> so all of that said, uh, the, weird, the other thing I did say as we came out, it was weird. The, the casting of Jessica Chastain and, and uh, Anne Hathaway was sensational for the period because... I rarely look at these films and go, wow, I really like what they're wearing. I see it and I see it's functional for creating the time, but I'm never looking at stuff unless it's a film like Poor Things and you're like, wow. But I loved both the actors. They were like, quite literally, warm props that looked beautiful in this setting. The, the clothes were beautiful. Their faces were just so 1950s, 1960s. beautifully lit. Yeah, so it's quite I mean, the planes easy on the eyes. of Jessica's face, yeah, yeah. A, a bone structure. And then lovely moments out in the garden where they were both 25 again, because it was very soft focus out the back, wasn't mm. it? But they just looked stunning. Mm. Um, yeah, so it was a visual feast. And the death count's high. Yeah, it's, it's unusual. He just keeps on knocking they, them down. She could just hide those black gloves, for God's sake. But uh, anyway, uh, if I, I know you don't score, if I was to score it, I'd probably give it 58 out of 100. If I was, because I don't score it, I, I tend to think, what would I say to my mates? Mm. I would say it's very short. It's a it's a holiday book page turner thriller that you can still keep a thread of and look after the kids. Yeah, but in this incredibly <laughs> highly populated landscape of film streaming and everything else, it ain't one of those films that's going to cut through for a long time. It's a distraction for a moment. Netflix. Yes. Yeah.